Let's look at the degree of unsaturation for organic molecules. We can use this to help us determine whether two molecules are constitutional isomers a little bit faster than if we were to just count up the number of hydrogens that are in the molecule. So let's talk about how this works and what unsaturation is. Unsaturation is places where we could add hydrogen. Well, a lot of times we think about that as a hydrogen adding process. For example, there are reactions where we could take carbon-carbon double bond, however it is, and we could add hydrogen to it. And we could use a, some kind of catalyst, like platinum. And if we have enough heat and pressure, we could add hydrogen to this across the double bond. And this process is called hydrogenation, but we can also call it a saturation reaction. So we are saturating this molecule with hydrogen. It doesn't have any more double bonds, no places that we could easily stick hydrogen onto them. So let's talk about how this works. For each double bond, we can add a degree of unsaturation. So we add one degree of unsaturation. For each triple bond, that adds two. Two degrees of unsaturation. And a ring adds a degree of unsaturation. So let's look at some examples. We have a butene. This has a single double bond in it, so therefore it has one degree of unsaturation. We can look at a nitrile, which has a carbon triple bond to a nitrogen. And since it contains a triple bond, even if it's not to another uh, carbon, could be to other atoms, called heteroatoms, this is two degrees. Of unsaturation. Another example of this could be a ketone, and this has one degree of unsaturation due to this double bond. You'll notice <coughs> that this oxygen here is saturated. So if this were to be saturated, and again, there are reactions that do that, we would turn this into an alcohol. And so we would add a hydrogen at this carbon, and we'd also add a hydrogen to the oxygen. And then it would get rid of the double bond, keeping the single bond, and then we'd add hydrogen in and then it would be saturated. But right now, it's unsaturated. So if we look at this example, 
we have several areas of unsaturation on this molecule. First, we can start with the carbon-carbon triple bond, which is plus two. We have a double bond here, and that's plus one. And we also have a ring, so that's another plus one. So this entire molecule has four degrees. Another similarly uh, ring structure is a benzene ring, and you'll see these often enough. This also has four degrees. There's three single bonds and a ring. So each of those, um, sorry, there's three double bonds. Each of those contributes one degree of unsaturation, and then the ring contributes the fourth one. So this can help you to identify if things are isomers instead of having to count them, count up the number of hydrogens. In the previous video, I had an example of cyclobutane, and I said it was a constitutional isomer of butenes. That might not be readily obvious if we're looking at things. And so you might decide, well, let's count up the number of hydrogens. And if I did, I would find that there's eight hydrogens here. Well, there's also eight here. That's one of the functions of looking at the degrees of unsaturation. Both of these have one degree of unsaturation. They both have four carbons. Therefore, we can identify that they will have the same number of hydrogens because they have the same amount of unsaturation. That's one of the uses of this um, calculation or determination. There are other molecules which would have would be fully saturated, and so then the degree of unsaturation would be zero. Like in the example up here where we've taken and saturated the molecule, we've taken it from a one degree of unsaturation down to no degrees of unsaturation. That's also a significant piece of information to see. Now it's one thing to go from a structure and determine the degrees of unsaturation. It's another to go from the formula and then calculate it. But you can keep this in mind that a fully saturated hydrocarbon has this formula for the number of hydrogens that it should contain. Two times the number of carbons plus two. And this is the number of hydrogens that's in a fully saturated molecule. So as an example, let's look at propane. And the structural formula for this is C3H8. You can see there's eight hydrogens. Three times two, that's six, plus an additional two, that's eight. So we can calculate the number of hydrogens that are expected in a fully saturated molecule. So if we see a formula that has a certain number of carbons and hydrogens, and we can go back to our um, C4H8. And if we were to do this calculation and look for the fully saturated, we would expect 8 plus 2, which is 10. So fully saturated would be 10 hydrogens. 
we're missing two. That means that there is one degree of unsaturation because there are two less hydrogens. Remember, for every double bond or ring, we subtracted two hydrogens to get there. So that's how you can determine it based on a chemical formula. Now, it gets a little bit different when you start adding oxygens and nitrogens and other things like that. So you may have to develop your own little bit of a formula for that. Just remember that nitrogens uh, will make three bonds. So as an example, this would be a fully saturated version of, of this amine. And the nitrogen is completely saturated. It doesn't make any other um, bonds in the non-ionic form. And we can also look at other forms, which is a constitutional isomer. So we've just moved the nitrogen's position to in the middle of the chain. And again, these are both fully saturated. One other thing that I should note is here's a chemical formula. This is C4H8Cl2. And this is a fully saturated molecule. And so you don't just look at the hydrogens, you also look at other atoms that are on it. And things like halogens kind of, at least for this calculation, directly substitute for hydrogens. And so for the calculation of degree of unsaturation, you can treat these chlorines just like they're hydrogens. And it will give you the correct result of their, this molecule is fully saturated. So it has a degree of unsaturation of zero. So you can play around with this and do a few examples and try to um, look at a few different ways of using this. But one of the main ways is to be able to draw isomers of a structure and recognize that, you know, if I have a, a double bond in my structure, I may be able to include rings as a constitutional isomer. And it's a way to try to remember all of the different combinations that you can have for when you're drawing constitutional isomers. So it's a useful calculation when we're looking at those different possibilities. So thank you for joining me for this video and we'll see you in the next one.